Welcome to Empowerment Word Church, where we empower people with the Word of God to live, fulfill, and be. Live a life that's pleasing to God. Fulfill the plan of God for your life and be witnesses and ambassadors in the earth for Christ. We are led by pastors Sean and Gwen Edwards. Visit us on the web at empowermentwordchurch.com. As you see behind me here says, when a mother's faith changes facts, everything is all right. When a mother's faith or when others' faith, come on, all believing men, I'm talking to you all this morning too. When a born again believer's faith changes facts. Let me give you a quick definition of what faith and facts are. Facts is something that is true. It's tangible. You can see it. You know it to be so. That's a fact. Back in the day, we used to say, that's a fact, Jack. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we used to say that when we're serious about it, we know it's true. That's a fact, Jack. Count on that. Faith. Definition of faith. I want to keep it simple and easy because I need us to get this because I had to get it. The Holy Spirit dealt with me. He said faith is taking God at his word, believing it, acting on it, and responding to it. You cannot say you have faith and you're not doing something about what you say you believe God for. You're going to have to take some leaps of faith. Faith has feet. Faith has a mouth. And faith responds to the word of God. So I'm coming from 2 Kings chapter 4, and we're going to deal with the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman from, from Shunam. I'm going to give you a little bit of history about the Shunammite woman. The Shunammite woman, she had no name. She was from, they called her Shunammite because she was from Shunam. That was her region of the, the area that she lived in. Just like I'm from Alabaster, so I guess I'm an Alabasterite woman. <laughs> you from Calera, you a Calerite. <laughs> so she is a Shunammite woman from Shunam. She was married. She was a woman of prominence. They were wealthy, her and her husband. They had some money. And the Bible says she was generous with her money. Most of all, with all of that, those facts about her, she was a God-fearing and a God-loving woman. She was in a relationship with the Lord. If you read the story for yourself when you get a chance, Read up on the Shunammite woman. And she was barren. Now, I say barren. It could have been the problem with her husband. But they were childless. She didn't have any children. And in that day, when a woman didn't have children, it was a stigma on a woman back in the Bible days. The other women sure would tear you down when you were childish. But because of her relationship with God... She moved on from that dream. She gave up on that because they didn't, couldn't conceive for whatever the reason was. The Bible doesn't tell us. But she didn't never stop serving the Lord. She kept serving. She believed God, the Shunammite woman. So if you go with me to verses 9 and 10, I want to read it to you. 4, 2 Kings 9 and 10. 
It said, then she said to her husband, I know that the one who often passes by here is a holy man of God. So let's make a small wall in upper room and put a bed and a table and a chair and a lamp there for him. Whenever he comes, he can stay there. Now this Shunammite woman had an encounter with a man named Elijah the prophet. Elijah was the right-hand man of Elijah. And when Elijah was being transformed out of here in the chariot of fire, he asked for a double portion of the blessing of God to be placed upon him. And God granted it. So that means that he did double the miracle signs and wonders that Elijah did. She encountered a man named Elijah who was walk, coming through Shunem every day with his servant. And she recognized him to be a holy man, a sanctified man, a man of God. When you show up in the room, do people recognize that you are a holy man? Do they recognize you to be sanctified? Are you recognizable as a true living witness, ambassador for God? This woman saw that this man was a man of God. And she convinced him one day to come and eat dinner with him. And he started having dinner with them. And then he, she went to her husband and says, look, let's build a room for him. So on his trips back and forth from Jezreel to Mount Gilboa and all the places he's doing ministry, Let's build a room to our house so he'll have a place to lay his head when he want to come back through and rest. Her husband agreed and they did this. And with that being said, my first point for us today, because this applies for us today, when in right relationship with God, believers can discern the things of God. When you are in right relationship with God, you able to recognize people of God and the things of God. You can know a good thing versus a God thing. You can, you can uh, recognize evil, carnality, spirituality, fleshliness. Oh, come on. When you are connected to the true and living God and you are in right relationship, right, living, right relationship produces right living. When you can believe right, you can live right. She was in right relationship and she had a spirit of discernment on her. And we too today need a spirit of discernment. When in right relationship with God, a believer can discern the things of God. Because she said, I perceive this to be a holy man. So she acted on it. She said, let's support him in ministry. Are you supporting the people of God that God tells you to support when you recognize them in ministry? It takes money to run ministry. It takes time and talent to run ministry. Can you discern when the man or the woman of God is in need of assistance? Are you in tune to the Holy Spirit to tell you that's a man or a woman of God and I need you to support them? Or do you just brush it off your shoulder and ignore them? Oh, when a mother's faith changes the facts, everything is all right. My second point. Faith in God's word overtakes fear in, in spite of the facts. And I said that because in her relationship with this, with Elijah the prophet, he was so elated about what she had done for him by building that room for him and serving him and supporting him the way that she was, that he wanted to do something for her. He wanted to do something for her. So he tells his servant Jehazi, Call the Shunammite woman in here and ask her, what can I do for her? And the woman said, absolutely nothing. See, when you're doing things for the kingdom of God, you ought to not have any wrong motives. Uh -huh. You should not have any wrong agendas. Everything we do for God should be from our heart, out of a heart of humility, because we love the Lord, and because he's been so good to us, we ought to do it willingly, joyfully, lovingly, without wrong motives. 
So she said, you, I don't need anything. He said, you don't need me to talk to the commander? or any. She says, no, I got the right people in my life. I got my family. I'm good. All is well. So he looks at his servant and says, I got to do something. He said, and the, the servant says, well, you know she don't have any children. Her husband old. Yeah, you, yeah, come on, y'all can read between the lines. He old, he ain't able to make that happen. See, that was the facts. That was the facts of the matter. Maybe she was barren and he couldn't do, he couldn't maneuver. But the, the truth of the matter is, God, with God, all things are possible to them that believe. All things are possible. So Elijah says, he, he looks at the woman and he says, this time next year, you're going to have a baby boy. And then she says, hold up, uh, preacher. Wait a minute, prophet. Don't play with me. I don't even want to go back on that dream no more. I done been there and done that, tried that. That's not working. That didn't work for us. So I done moved on from that. Don't lie to me. And he said it again. He said, this time next year, you're going to have a son. Well, she did. The time that he said she was going to have a son, she did. And as we move on, I said, faith in God's word overtakes fear in spite of facts. For God has not given us a spirit called fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So by the, this woman, this Shunammite woman has a son. So if you move with me down here to verse number eight, it says, one day, No, I'm in verse 18. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It says, she had a son. When you went to all this trouble. Verse 18. It says, the child grew and one day went out to his father and, and the harvesters. Suddenly he complained to his father, my head, my head. His father told his servant, carry him to his mother. So he picked him up and took him to his mother. The child sat on her lap until noon and then died. She went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut him in, and she left. Now I'm going to give you the facts of this. The boy dead. Breath has left this boy's body. This beautiful gift that God gave this Shunammite woman and her husband has died. Those are the facts. When we see, encounter a loved one losing, done lost their life, the first thing we go do, we're going to go to screaming and hollering and carrying on. Matter of fact, we're going to start planning a funeral. We're going to call the pastor. We're going to call the coroner. We're going to call the, the church members, the intercessors, because the situation looked hopeless. We, it's, it's over. But this Shunammite woman, she didn't do that. It said that she, when the boy died at noon, she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, that room she had built for the Elijah the prophet. And she shed him in and she left. My, that leads me to my next fact. Fact Faith in God's word releases power for positive confession. The facts was laying right there in front of her. Faith in God will cause a believer to say what they are expecting to see. This Shunammite woman did not get overwhelmed. She did not get excited. She did not lose her mind over what had just transpired. But instead, she took him into the bed, the room of the prophet, and laid the boy on the bed. And she shut the door. I don't know about you this morning, but sometimes as life happens to us, when life shows up, when the dynamics of life happen, when you're challenged, I dare you to take it to the throne of God, lay it at his throne, and shut the door. I dare you to shut the door and tell God, it's nothing I can do with this. I need your divine intervention right now. You need to shut the door when the doctor give you a bad report. You need to tell what to say 
what the word say. By his wounds, I am already healed. You need to shut the door when life is happening to you. I dare you to turn it over to God and give it to him. For with God, all things are possible to them that believe. You won't have to shut the door. She's already got her mind made up and said, my son shall live and not die and tell of the wonderful works of the Lord. You need to tell the Lord, now Lord, you said, you said, if I seek your kingdom first and your righteousness, all and everything I need will be added to me. She shut the door, left the boy on the bed. She didn't panic. She didn't get excited. But she shut the door. And in verse 22 it says, she summoned her husband and said, please send me one of your servants and one of your donkeys so I can hurry to the man of God and come back again. But he said, this is what her husband said, why go to him today? It's not a new moon or a Sabbath. I told you that faith in God's word releases power for positive confession. Then she replied, everything is all right. Your translation may say all is well, but everything is all right. This Shunammite woman, she didn't even tell her husband that the boy had died. Because she probably knew how her husband was going to respond. See, you got to be careful what you say and who you say it to. When you're walking in faith with God, you got to say what God said. You got to believe what the word of God says. Even though the boy was dead and that was a fact, what about in your life? What dead situation you done gave up on God for? What dream, what plans, what goals have you set that haven't come to pass and you've given up on God? He will resurrect it. She gave, she did not give up. So she did not even tell her husband that the boy had died. But she asked him for a donkey and a servant to go to see the man of God. And he asked her, it's not Sunday. It ain't time to go to church. It's not a new moon. We don't have no celebrations going on today. What you going there for? She said, everything going to be all right. The facts were standing her in the face. But she said, by faith. I know that if I can get to the man of God who's in right relationship with the true and living God, everything going to be all right. She said, if I can just get to God, I know that the man of God will connect with the true and living God and everything going to be all right. My boy will live. He will be resurrected. She had already made up her mind that everything is going to be all right. What about you? What's coming out of your mouth? What are you saying when challenges are happening to you? What are you saying when the life dynamics are coming your way, when you are being challenged? I understand about faith that in order for you to know your level of faith, you're going to have to be challenged in your life with dynamics of life so that way you will believe and trust God. You will hold on to God because he's our only way. I don't have a plan B. He is my plan A. I call on the name of the Lord. He said, when you seek me, you will find me if you seek me with your whole heart. I dare you to turn it over to God. Give it to him. Shut the door. Leave it at the throne. I promise you everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Powerful confessions are powerful enough to sustain you and your miracle. This woman needed a miracle. Her son was dead. Should have been planning a funeral. Should have been calling the preacher. Should have been calling her friends and family to plan a funeral. But she didn't. I came to tell you over in Proverbs 18 and 21, the power of life and death is in your mouth. 
is in your tongue. Be careful what you say and how you say it. That's why the Bible say be slow to speak and quick to hear and slow to anger. So when life happens to you, don't be in no hurry to speak. When you hear things on the job that they finna lay off, you better look to the hills for where your help come from because your help come from the Lord. I tell my co-workers, you may be laid off, but I'm still gonna be here because I have favor with God and favor is for a lifetime. I'm going to say what God said. He said, I will supply all of your needs according to my riches and glory. So when you're challenged in life, I dare you to call on the name of the Lord. Call on him. All is well. Peace is still. And the thing about this Shunammite woman, when she got to the man of God, she was on her way. The man of God saw her coming. Listen at what he said to his servant. He said, look, there's a Shunammite woman. Uh, run out to meet her and ask her, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Is your son all right? And she answered. This is what she said to the servant. Because, see, sometimes you got to be careful who you say what's going on in your life to. Jehazi, if you read on in chapter 5 of 2 Kings, he ended up having a wrong heart. His motives in his heart were wrong. With the pro when when uh, Elijah healed the prophet Nathan from uh, leprosy, he told him he didn't want no money. But Jehazi came behind him and said, I, yeah, he changed his mind. I'll take that money. Yeah, but see, his heart wasn't wrong. Right. So that spirit of discernment will cause you to know who to say what to. You got to know the people of God. You got to recognize the things of God. Because she told Jehazi everything was all right, even though everything was not all right. She was in a dire strait. It was the worst of the worst. But she said, I got to get to the man of God. So when she got to, to uh, Elijah, the Bible said, then she said, did I ask you, my Lord, for a son? Didn't I say don't lie to me? So Elijah knew right then, I got to get to her house. But he sent Jehazi ahead of him. He said, take my staff and lay it on the boy, and he should be all right. But because Jehazi's heart wasn't right, the boy still didn't come back to life. But when Elijah went in that room, according to the word of God, see, you got to have some people that spirit filled are sanctified in right relationship with God to stand in the gap for you. Don't be quick about asking anybody to pray for you. Everybody is not in your favor. You better be careful and ask God give me a spirit of discernment so I'll know who to contact. And sometimes you ain't got time to get to no intercessor. You ain't got time to get to the pastor. You ain't got time to get to your sister. But you better have a relationship with God to be able to distinguish the things of God and go to the throne yourself. I dare you to hasten to the throne. So Elijah went to the room. He saw the dead boy laying on the bed. And according to the Bible, Elijah stretched out over the boy, hand to hand, mouth to mouth, eye to eye. And according to the Bible, it said that the boy started getting warm. Oh, I dare you that the blood of Jesus call on the blood it still worked the blood in that boy body got warm then it says he got up and then he started to pace the floor a little bit more he began to pray god you are life you are the life giver you are the life sustainer you said when i call on you you will answer and you will show me great and mighty things Things I did not know, for you said the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You will not withhold any good thing from me, for you are the one that gives gifts. And according to your word, the gifts and callings from God are irrevocable. So the gift that he had gave that woman, it wasn't God that took it back. You know the devil was busy then, back in the Bible days, and he's still busy today. I dare you to call the devil what he is. He is a liar. He is defeated. Jesus came and destroyed the works of the devil. We are victorious. He always causes us to triumph. God is good. He 
is faithful, everything gonna be all right. When a mother's faith changes the facts, she said, if only I can get to the man of God who know the true and living God, everything gonna be all right. The difference with the Shunammite woman and the Alabasterite woman who is me, that today I don't need a middle man to stand in the gap for me. Jesus did it all. He finished it at Calvary. It said that when Jesus died, the veil was torn from the top to the bottom, giving us access to the throne of God. He said, come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy and make your request known to God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your heart and will guard your mind in Christ Jesus. And in my closing, I tell you today, never doubt the faithfulness and the promises of God. God said it, I believe it, and it's settled with me. God said it, I believe it, it's settled with me. I'm going to say what God said. I'm going to say what I want to see. I'm expecting something from God. I'm expecting my whole family to be saved. Because the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. I'm expecting something from God. Everything going to be all right. I dare you to say everything going to be all right. Mothers, grandmothers, single mothers, stepmothers, draw closer to God. Hold on to your faith. Everything going to be all right. We don't need a middle man. Jesus did it all. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. So I dare you, if you're born again, build your relationship with the one that shed his blood on Calvary, that died for us. Yet while we were sinners, Christ died. When a mother's faith, when the believer's faith can change the facts, a fact is what's true. The, the faith that we have has to be in the Word of God. Say what God say and expect for something to happen. Make sure that your heart is right and everything will be all right. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Everything's going to be all right. We serve a mighty God. Yet while we were sinners, Christ died. And if you are here today and you don't know God, Jesus, in the partners of your sin, today is the day of salvation with you. I heard somebody say one day I wouldn't be called dead without Jesus. Because when you're dead, it's too late. And if you have not made Jesus your choice, today is the day of salvation for you. For he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And if that's you today, and you haven't made Jesus your choice, he's pulling at the heartstrings of your heart. God desires for none to perish, but all to come to repentance. And if you were once in a relationship with God, but you backslid back out into the world, and you lost fellowship with the Lord, he said, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If that's you today, make him your choice. Choose him today. Tomorrow may be too late. People we know closely are leaving here every day and we are not exempt. But according to the word of God, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. That even if you die, you will live with me forever. So to make Jesus your choice today, to God be the glory, I pray that this word has blessed you, that it will help you and sustain you for a little while longer.
Thank you for watching today. We hope this message has been a blessing to you. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on social media on Facebook and Instagram at Empowerment Word Church. You can also view this and other messages from Empowerment Word Church on Facebook and YouTube. If you are blessed by this message and would like to support the ministry, simply go to EmpowermentWordChurch.com and select the Give tab at the top of the page. Remember to live, fulfill, and be. And we'll see you next time.